Hey, check it out. My name is Jeremiah Nickel from JF Productions, Kansas City. Greetings to my YouTube channel. I'm going to talk a little bit about Ethereum today, talk a bit about baked potatoes. First thing I'm going to do, what I didn't do in my last video on baked potatoes, is really describe what I'm going to do today as I go. So, anyway, I have a ton of potatoes here uh, for a parent or for a parent teacher conferences. So, teachers don't get to go home today. So, Mr. Nickel is the uh, resident cook, and my job is to prep all these potatoes. So, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, stab them with a fork. And while I'm doing that, I'll talk to you a little bit about my thoughts in crypto land and uh, beyond. So. Uh, I'm going to talk about Ethereum first, <clears throat> and uh, it kind of dawned on me uh, last time I made a video. I had a uh, I have a baked potato video in my channel. I went back today to find out when that was and what the price was at the time, and <laughs> the price was thirty nine dollars at the time I made that video, around thirty nine dollars six months ago. Today the price is, yet again, just under $300. And uh, I remember in that video that, you know, there was a lot of people speculating there was suppression going on with the price and accumulation was happening. And uh, remember how many times we hit our head on the $42 level and we couldn't get past it, couldn't get past it, and then what happened? Boom! Shot straight up, didn't it? And uh, obviously, leading up to the all-time high, I believe in June, around June, I don't know, sometime, maybe it was earlier than that. That doesn't matter. Six months ago, the price was under $50. And I remember at that time thinking, it sure does feel like with this, with this happening, and I don't, you know, I'm not going to surmise that it's going on now. But it sure does feel like anything under $50 at that time was a steal. I even said it in the video. Like, it's just inevitable with all the, the head bumping on a certain dollar level. Eventually, um, people give up selling and they get worn out and the price goes up. Well, we've seen all-time high 400 some odd dollars. We saw 90% flipping with uh, Bitcoin. And uh, Bitcoin went on a tear, an absolutely extraordinary run. And, uh, you know, the ratio sat underneath, uh, you know, 75.075 for a long time, or point, point oh seven five for a long time. And it still seems like it just doesn't want to get above that, that magic number and hasn't for a while on the ratio. Likewise, the US dollar seems like there's a lot of head bumping. Every time we drop below 300, that we stay there for a while. And, uh, you know, I don't really see that happening for too much longer. And for all the same reasons that we talk about in our, in our, um, Daily, and, and I haven't been posting very much, but you know, it's just Metropolis on the way, suppression of ICOs, lots of money got thrown around, lots of bubbles everywhere, people taking advantage of the swing trades that are almost like clockwork, you know, uh, especially when we touch that $300 mark. I liken it to a sea anemone. If you've ever seen a sea anemone on a nature channel, just imagine that. $300 comes floating around to the sea anemone, and then it wants to eat the sea anemone, but then the anemone sucks in, right, and gets scared. And uh, you know, I have a lot of purchasing power above 300, and we've gone above it, obviously, a couple times, and then we correct. And, but man, when we correct, we go all in on the correction. Our percentage drop compared to Bitcoin and some other ones has just been brutal, because it feels like people that trade both Bitcoin and Ethereum sell, and then the US dollar people sell, the Koreans sell, and the price goes a, a little bit lower than anticipated. Hey, everybody say hi to Mr. B, my PE teacher. 
Hi, Mr. B. Hi, Mr. B. So I'm talking to the YouTubes of the world about my thoughts on Ethereum and the road ahead, especially with the hard fork coming. But you were talking about your potato head. Yeah, my potato head. This is potato head, baby. I'm kind of a potato head. But uh, so we got our hard fork coming up. And you know what? Get ready for the Fudsters to return. And you know what's going to happen. I have a feeling. This is just me with my silver fedora tinfoil hat. Hey, this potato looks funky to me. I'm going to bake it and see what happens. What I think is possible is uh, hard fork rolls on. I think there's going to be some coordinated spam attacks on the network to test it to find its vulnerabilities. And if I'm not mistaken, the developers have already put out, they doubled the amount of bounty money for bugs. Um, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and again, I'm not, I've been so busy in my personal life, I can't even keep up with all the news, but I believe not only did they double the bug bounty, I think some of the Ethereum Foundation members wanted to uh, delay the rollout by another week or two. Man, I'm getting starch all over the shirt. I'm going to be looking beautiful. So uh, I say all good. Take your time, right? You this is, this is a, a very, very long-term and uh, robust project. You know, the $300 valuation we have now is... You know, it, it may be high by some standards. Um, not the val sorry, not the valuation, the speculative valuation may be high. The value potential of it, though, could go another 10x in two years. And I'm not even, I'm not even exaggerating. Because we are looking at development of EEA is pretty consistent. You know, it's not just a badge of honor. You know, they have committees set up working on this stuff. This isn't, this isn't like they're signing on to a new fad, right? These, these trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars worth of companies don't just sign on to get a, a participation award, right? I mean, if you paid attention to State Street Bank over the last few months, they're working in-house on, on some blockchain solutions. People are scrambling right now. Blockchain is not a fad. You know, I mean, it's just not. It's, it's going to replace a lot of jobs, sadly. Um, but the new jobs coming down the line, such as coders, and different kinds of developers. It even seems like whole new styles of teams are being made, not just traditional things. I mean, we're talking about people spread out across the globe working on projects together that are going to create jobs that haven't even been invented yet. You know? This is stuff I remember hearing about from a junior high computer teacher, science teacher, back when our school was one of the first in Kansas, it's a small town, but it was one of the first in Kansas to get the internet. And he said, you guys are gonna be going out into the world doing jobs that haven't even been invented yet. Well, he's certainly spot on because, you know, I don't have a job in the blockchain industry yet. I guess I'm a low level pundit at best, but I'm definitely not a, a, a coder or anything like that. But still, I'm participating in, a, in the blockchain space, which is like science fiction compared to what I was uh, dealing with back in the late 80s, early 90s, back when there was bulletin board systems and, you know, dial-up modems and all these in, inferior, back then were high tech, now they're just like antiquated technologies. Now let's take a break, check this out. Now, I hate Walmart. But I had to shop there one time, and they do have some pretty cheap seasonings. So sometimes I pick up my seasonings from there. They have these uh, this Old Thompson brand, and these are really inexpensive. I mean, salt and pepper, right? 
But this stuff I found is superb. It's called steak and burger seasoning. <laughs> and I use I use this on baked potatoes too. And I go, you go real generous with this, okay? So I don't know if you can see all these potatoes right here. Look at all those beauties. All right. So the steak and burger seasoning is a good little herb blend. Um, I'm sure it's got some like coriander, fennel, you know, I may even show you right on here. Garlic, I'm sure. Sea salt, spices, dill seed, coriander. Ah, I was right, coriander. You know what coriander is, right? Any of you nerds out there in the kitchen, coriander? Cilantro? Cilantro, right? Um, dehydrated garlic, yep, yep, yep. Just good all-purpose rub, but it's great on baked potatoes because, you know, when you cook, cut it on the outside of your baked potato, and you bake it, and then you have it next, next to a steak, that olive oil and that stuff gets all in the juices. I'm like, it's generous, generous amount of salt. So when you season these, and then you put olive oil on these baked potatoes, when they when they go into the oven, it makes it, the skin kind of crispy. And I don't cover, don't <clears throat> don't cover the uh, baked potatoes with foil. Just stab them a little bit, and that'll help release some of the water. If you cover them, sometimes the foil will uh, steam the potato too much, and then you get a kind of like almost like a mushy mashed potato. And then black pepper. Lots and lots and lots. So, what else was I going to go into? Oh man, okay. Some of you guys might be sick of hearing this, but the OMG team, Omisego, I was on their Discord, and once again, this speculation around apples popping up again. Now, first of all, I'll say this. I like, you know, I like proper news releases. I'm not a big fan of tweets, right? I'm a conservative, but I didn't vote Trump because I hate, I hate the way he tweets. That's not a leader. Well, same goes for some organizations. And I like Twitter a lot, but I think if you're going to do a proper announcement, do it like they would in the business world, okay? So they'll come out with these tweets that are a little you know, at Google headquarters, right? Or they'll be on their way to San Francisco for wherever. And it's like, there's no, there's no like hard evidence. It's just a tweet or a whisper. And, you know, taking a picture of Dr. Gaff and Vitalik and the Omisego team, and they got the skateboard with the Apple logo immediately. I was thinking, oh, please don't make this some thinly veiled deal. Well, and then it got kind of thrown away and tossed away. And then it seems like there was another, oh, something that came out over the Discord that's kind of like, well, are they talking to Apple? I'm not going to go into it much more than, if they do roll out with some something with Apple, I, you know, if I was Apple, you know, I'm pretty sure the way they handle business isn't little snippets of Easter eggs and different tweets that I just don't think that's that bodes well. The other news is a speculation of Amisego tying into the Japanese central banking system somehow. Again, I don't know if there's any truth to that, you know, but then they there's some Discord message about, well, check out the white paper again and Sure enough, it mentions some of the associating associative branches of uh, certain organ, uh, protocols or banks that, you know, but at the end of the day, it kind of ended up being speculated, well, they're probably going to deal with Ripple because they're already involved. And so I can't speak to the truth or validity to any of this stuff. You know, me say go, that arm is... I think officially about, what, a year old maybe, and even though the company is... Uh, since 2013, a few years old. So it, you know, kind of remains to be seen. Would I like, yeah, would I like a partnership with Apple? Yeah, I'm a holder, all right, in full disclosure. I am a holder. But my hands get a little bit weak if we're going to start conducting business with multinational, you know, centrally controlled banks and, you know, our, <laughs> our business is convoluted tweets and, uh, 
little whispers of things on Slack or Discord or whatever channels. It's like, man, you're talking about multiple billions of dollars potentially down the road, and it's, it's just kind of being handled in a, in a way that I would like to see cleaned up a bit. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be like a weird hype cycle thing. That, that was kind of, that just kind of turns me off a bit. But what do I know? Um, profit is profit, yes. But you know what? At the end of the day, I like to see proper business tactics and, and good quality news rela releases on good quality news organizations without some kind of spin or um, speculative thing going along with that. I mean, yeah, it's, I guess if you're talking to big players, you got to learn how to stay quiet. I, I would assume that maybe some of this is just cultural stuff. You know, maybe business in Asia is handled this way in, the, in some ways. I don't know. I'm just a simple teacher. I don't get, you know, I don't, I don't get involved with multinational uh, methods of news releases for proper, you know, venture capital groups or anything like that. So I won't speculate any further on that. Other than I think ONG could be huge, um, you know, in the, in the years ahead. I'm, it's a long-term uh, store for me. I'm not. I am going to try to swing trade a little bit, but it seems like one of those deals. Well, when they were talking about McDonald's, somehow a little news snippet got out about McDonald's, and it was like, oh yeah, right. You know, oh this is just a, this isn't a partnership. This is just like, you know, a photo op. Well then, sure enough, a partnership was formed, and that news came true, for better or for worse. On the way it was released, it did come true. And, you know, Omisigo has offices in four different countries, I believe. Indonesia, Thailand, Japan, uh, Malaysia, you know, they're not too far off from China and South Korea and other places down in the, the Pacific. So, you know, good luck to the team. That's just my little thoughts on that. And... Uh, of course, my other, my other coin that I'm interested in, because I, I like seeing a company that has a continually updated working uh, product, even if it's in uh, test mode, is uh, Fun, Fun Fair, and the team with uh, Jez saying, the cool thing about their Discord uh, channel is that, you know, Jez is on there, and uh, some of the other uh, developers are on there as well, and They'll talk to you. They, they, you know, they want to get to know their their people, and uh, they are taking their time going into uh, really ramping up and rolling out their product. And I and I like to see that. I think if I read correctly, they are not going to do a second ICO. They were going to do a second ICO and then a coin burn um, in. What I was reading was that they're not going to do another ICO because they are worried it won't be well received due to all the news of the frustrating ICOs that have come along, yet they're still going to be doing a coin burn. So please check your own sources on that as well as anything I'm talking about. Do not take my word as salt, okay? Take it for pinch of salt there what I'm saying because I'm not an expert but if they're doing a second coin burn and reducing supply that should get interesting then once they are fully ramped up uh, then they've already got they're talking Jez was saying you know they're talking to different casinos they're not pushing this thing fast they want it to be done right because I think they want it to absolutely take over and and really be the go-to for the casino world. I got to thinking, how cool would it be, let's say Funfair has all their games, but then as a token holder, if you already have a rewards card, say at uh, Caesars Palace, that you could redeem points off of the online Caesars Palace casino 
and uh, use that to buy flare or to, uh, you know, put put points on your next stay in Las Vegas. Like there's ways that you can participate in Vegas without actually having to to be there. And then you take those points with you, and it all rides on the blockchain. So it almost like could be a rewards system for the fun fair holders. So fun fair would have their own point system that would tie into you know. Golden Nugget, you know, Caesars Palace, NGM, New York, New York, but then also other casinos in Atlantic City or down in the Bahamas or wherever casinos are in the world, your Funfair Pass could uh, be useful in, in anywhere you travel. That's a pretty big mind blow. And then you could have flair and trophies, leaderboards, just like any video game, uh, except it uh, deals with real money. That would be pretty incredible. And something tells me these guys have thought of it already. They, they, are, they are making a very clean interface. If you haven't seen the showcase, go to funfair.io, check out the showcase, and uh, take a look for yourself. Really, that's it for me, man. Uh, status, I have some, I got some status a long time ago, uh, but it looks like status is going to make some moves, too. Um, being the one of the main sponsors, if not premier sponsor for um, DevCon 3. Well, I hope so. How much money they make again on their ICO? And I don't know how much of it they've spent, but you know what? Spend it on advertising. Promote DevCon 3. I'm excited, man. Everything's exciting. Here we are. Make a baked potato six months later. It went from $39 to $390 in six months, and then came back down to, what, 134 on one exchange or so. Here we are, 75% of all-time high, just floating. It's this ping-pong thing, right? 65 to 80% of all-time high, just sitting there, just riding a current. I mean, if that's our sideways, the next pump's going to make everybody's neck snap. It's going to go so quick. Mm. Blessed to be here. Anyway, big hugs from Kansas City. I made a really long video today, and I don't know how much of it makes sense to you. Please follow up and check out your uh, your own uh, links and uh, share with me if you find something I said wrong. I want to be corrected. I'm not accepting any crypto donations. I'm not even going to ask you to subscribe to my channel. If you come across this video, hit the like button and move on. I appreciate it, man. Big hugs. Cheers.